hey, uh, Henry, couldn't help noticing you're using Facebook? Uh, you know that's bad for privacy, right? Our whole friend group kinda left after they heard that Zuck said he wouldn't even want his kids using it. I'll have you know I'm actually using a VPN, which Zuck or Berg's kids likely didn't even know about, which is why they didn't use Facebook. Idiot. Well, y y you do know VPNs only protect you to make you anonymous. But all they do is stop- Check the VPN website, you tore shill. It said anonymous. Why would they lie to me? <sighs> hey everybody, and welcome to TechLore. Today we're going to address the five biggest and most common VPN mistakes I've seen running this channel and our communities for several years. These aren't in a particular order, and I'd recommend everybody keeps them in mind as they apply to most people. Let's start with mistake number one. The first mistake is two parts. If you don't fully understand what a VPN is doing, you may become overconfident in its abilities to protect you. So let's cover misunderstanding VPNs first. Using a VPN to access a website like Facebook won't do much for your privacy against Facebook outside of hiding your IP address. Even this likely is little to no benefit, as if you have ever signed in using your real IP address, Facebook already associates that with you. It's even theoretically possible if you're using the same browser with the same fingerprint, Facebook may be able to tie together a signed out session on their homepage with your real IP address to your account that only signed in with a VPN. Although that is a stretch, it is possible. Likewise, using a VPN on your computer will not prevent companies like Microsoft from collecting telemetry data about everything you're doing on your operating system. What VPNs do hide is your IP address from sites that never previously had your real IP address to associate. They can be used to geospoof your location, to bypass regional restrictions, and VPNs encrypt your traffic, preventing local networks, cellular companies, and ISPs from snooping and collecting your data, which does happen. So. Understand what VPNs do and don't get cocky. Even with a VPN, you are transferring your trust outside of your ISP to your VPN provider, which is going to directly tie into mistake number two. Using a bad service. This can mean a lot of things, but you have to be aware that you are putting a lot of faith into a single provider to handle your data, who may be in an international country as a white label or shell company with no public team and zero transparency behind their practices. It's kind of sketch. So when picking a VPN, this should be what you trust the most. Some things that build trust is a clean and long history, public team members, community presence, open sourcing clients, getting audits done, avoiding strictly free services. We've covered that more thoroughly in another video I'll leave in the description. And sometimes you can't put trust into words. Someone may not trust something out of a gut feeling with no real reasons, which does have some validity to it within reason. You should feel comfortable with whatever you end up picking. Now, you could have picked a great service and still made a major mistake. So that brings us to number three, using a service that's bad for you. This is a very important distinction to make. You could buy Molvad, who has an excellent track record, open source clients, WireGuard, no registration information needed, cash support, and they don't even have an affiliate plan, so I have no reason to speak highly of them outside them being a great service. Well, it could be bad for you. Why? Maybe you're not near any of those servers and you get terrible speeds. Maybe you're getting a VPN for Netflix, which Molvad is not very good for. Maybe you need an iOS client, which Molvad doesn't publicly have. The point is, even if a service is good, it may not be good for you. So it's extremely important for you to do research for your specific needs and utilize trials when possible. Anyone who tells you there is a single VPN for you without asking what your needs are is almost certainly misguiding you on either purpose or accident. All right, so you finally found a service that fits your needs perfectly, but mistake number three is still a common mistake using real information to register for your VPN. A lot of times, VPNs are the first thing that get people in the privacy and security world, myself included. I mean, look at our first video. As a noob, if your VPN service is promising security and privacy with your real information, it's much easier and convenient to just sign up with your real information like we're used to, as what's the harm, they seem safe enough. A lot of times after buying a VPN with your real information and diving deeper into the privacy world, you realize 
Ah, crap. My threat model is increased and I prefer to not have handed my real name, address, email, and payment information to this random company. Threat models change all the time. It's what you want to protect. And if you want to develop a threat model, which I recommend everybody does, I'll leave a source in the description for you to check out. If you're going with a VPN and you're unsure if you want to use your real information, just opt not to. There are so many good VPNs that don't require very much personal information with close to anonymous payment methods that will give you peace of mind. Mulvet and Winscribe specifically don't require anything to register, not even an email with anonymous payment methods, and iVPN is likely joining that boat soon. Other VPNs like Surfshark may require an email, but they do allow anonymous payment methods, so you can just use a non-personal email with something like ProtonMail if you don't want to hand over your real personal information. I'll leave links to all of this stuff in the description. Those links will support us, but we'll have normal links as well if you don't want to click the affiliate links. But, I mean, please click them as it does support our work with really no downside to you. So, <laughs> Henry, I understand VPNs. I am not cocky. I picked a trusted service that works perfectly for me with no personal information. <laughs> I'm set. And I'd say close. Mistake number five is not enabling your kill switch. A kill switch will cut all internet if your VPN disconnects randomly, ensuring that if a leak happens or if your VPN connection crashes, your real IP address is never exposed. Now, depending on your threat model, you may have a very specific use case for a VPN and not want it on 24 seven. And if that's you, then ignore this. But for the overwhelming majority who wants everything they do tunneled through the VPN, enable the kill switch. Most top services today have one as they've become a pretty staple feature. And that was our five biggest mistakes people make related to VPNs. Did we miss something? Have you done or do one of these things that this video prevented you from continuing? I'd love to hear some of those stories in the comments. Those are always pretty fun to read, so leave them below. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and subscribe for future systematic VPN reviews and content with full transparency in mind, teaching you what you need to know about privacy and security. If you want to go the extra mile and help support our work and enable us to publish even more and higher quality content, check out our Patreon where we have fun perks for all of you already there, ready to go. We just hit 50 patrons, so thank you to everybody who's helping us out. It's just, it's freaking awesome. And that is the video. Thank you for watching and have a pretty fantastic day. Yeah, yeah. Have a good day. Yeah.